In this video, I'm going to talk about the basic stuff, the fundamentals of science. So firstly, we're going to discuss the metric system. The metric system is a decimal measuring system based on the meter, liter, and gram. The metric system is a system based on 10, so 10 to the power of any value would get you a spot or a prefix on the metric system. The main ones start off with unit, so for example 10 to the power of 0 grams is equal to 1 gram. Then there is kilo, which is 10 to the power of 3, so for example 10 to the power of 3 grams would be 1 kilogram. Then you've got 10 to the power of 2, which is hecto, and 10 to the power of 1, which is deca. On the other side of the spectrum, you've got the negative powers of 10, with the main ones being deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. These are just prefixes which represent powers of 10. So for example, kilo represents a thousand, while pico represents 0.11 zeros followed by one. So now let's look at some examples. The first one says convert 3.4 kilometers into meters. Because kilo is 10 to the power of 3, your answer will be 3.4 times 10 to the power of 3, which is 3,400 meters. The second example asks us to find 150,000 microliters in liters. Because micro is 10 to the power of minus 6, you move the decimal point 6 places to the left to get 0.15 liters. In the third example, we must convert 13,000 picometers into nanometers. Pico is 10 to the negative 12, and nano is 10 to the negative 9. So the first step is to divide them, or in simple terms, subtract negative 12 by negative 9. In the end, you would get 10 to the power of negative 3. So you multiply 10 to the power of negative 3 by 13,000 to get 13 nanometers. Now we're going to be talking about some basic quantities. The first quantity we're going to be talking about is mass. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter in a substance. Matter refers to anything with mass that occupies space. The unit of mass is grams. For any specific substance, as the amount of molecules or atoms increases, the mass also increases. So if we have two structures, one with four oxygen molecules, which we can call structure A, and the other with two oxygen molecules, which we can call structure B. A is more massive than B because it has more oxygen atoms and molecules. The next quantity is volume, which is the amount of space an object takes. The units for volume are liters and centimeters cubed. One centimeter cube is equal to one milliliter. Just a quick note you might want to be aware of, is that for a sample of gas, the volume of the gas is equal to the volume of the container. And the container is a solid, so if the container doesn't indicate what the volume is, then find it out using the displacement method of solids. To find out the volume of a liquid, pour it into a graduated beaker, and take a reading. So, for example, it might be 100 milliliter. To find out the volume of a solid, put the solid into 100 milliliters of a liquid or any other known volume. The change in the reading is equal to the volume of the solid. So, for example, if you put the solid shown into 100 milliliters of liquid, the reading on the beaker becomes 120. So, 120 minus 100 is the volume of the solid. The solid is 20 milliliters or 20 centimeters cubed. Now, it's time to talk about density. Density gives us the ratio between mass and volume. It has a formula of mass divided by volume. In symbols, this can be written as rho equals m over v. It therefore has the units of kilogram per centimeter cubed. When people say feathers are light, they're actually referring to the fact that it has a low density. This means that it has a relatively large volume compared to its low mass. The next quantity we're going to be looking at is pressure. Pressure is the ratio between the force applied on a surface and its surface area. You can measure pressure using two devices. The first one is the barometer and the second one is the manometer. Pressure has many units. The main one is the pascal. The pascal is equal to 1 newton per meter. Other important units for pressure are tar, millimeters mercury and atmospheres. Atmospheric pressure or standard pressure is the pressure the air exerts on the surface of the earth. This is equal to 101 kilopascals, 760 tar, 760 millimeters mercury, or one atmosphere. Another essential quantity you must know of is energy. Energy is defined as the ability to do work or transfer heat. There are many forms of energy. However, the main ones for now are heat, light, kinetic energy, which in chemistry refers to the movement of particles, and then there's also potential energy and chemical bond energy. One thing you must remember about chemical bond energy is that breaking bonds requires energy, while forming bonds releases energy. The units of energy are joules and calories. One calorie equals to 4.186 joules. 
The next thing we'll be looking at is temperature and specific heat capacity. The first thing we must know is that heat is not the same thing as temperature. In fact, heat is defined as the transfer of energy from a body with high temperature to a body with low temperature. Temperature, however, is the average kinetic energy of molecules within a body. So let's say that I've got two containers. The first container contains one kilogram of iron, and the second container contains one kilogram of water. And I'll give them both 5,000 joules of thermal energy. Which one do you think will have a faster rise of temperature? Yes, it is iron, but why? There are three variables which can affect a temperature change. These are the energy supplied, the mass of the object, and the material the object is made of. In this case, the mass is constant, which is 1 kilogram, and the energy supplied is also constant, which is 5 kilojoules. So it's got to be the material. So now we agree that different materials require different amounts of energy to raise its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. This value is specific to each object and is called the heat capacity. The specific heat capacity, however, is the amount of heat one gram of a certain substance must absorb to raise its temperature by one Kelvin, or one degree Celsius. This is represented by the equation E equals mc delta T. While E is the energy supplied, m is the mass, C is the specific heat capacity, and T is temperature. This equation can be rearranged to give us C equals E over m delta T. This would give us the units of specific heat capacity, which are joule per kilogram degree Kelvin or joule per kilogram degree Celsius. So this is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not, and most importantly, thanks for watching.